frustrated, you get your Bible out. You have a look at that word and chew on it, think about it, chew on it, think about it. And understand that sustainment means God is going to sustain me in the nighttime. God is going to sustain me in the daytime. God is going to take the weight off of me. So she went to the man of God. Now I want you to notice that sometimes even in life, we have a hard time even believing the word. Okay, Because the man of God today represents the word in your life. Let's look at this. And Elijah took the child, and he said, See, your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that you're a man of God, and that the word in your mouth is God's truth. And now I know. And now I know. How many know that you say, and now I know, because obviously her faith was shaken just a little bit. How many know her circumstance was shaken? She says, Now I know the word of God is true. Now I know you're a man of God. Now I know what God has said is true coming out of your mouth. Because we all have those mornings when you look out the window and go, Wow, what do we do now? What do you do now? Who hasn't had that? The greatest revelation, if you could ever get anything, is that everybody in life has stuff. And don't allow the enemy to come along and say, You're the only one. You're alone. You're alone. You're alone. You're not alone. God wants to provide that miracle working power for you today. He doesn't want to just sustain you yesterday. He wants to sustain you today. He wants to fill you with not only a belly full of food, but sustainment for tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. So that we don't have to stop and say, now I know, Lord, your word really works. We need to be able to say, it works. You don't have these stories of India and all these places in, in you know, faraway land where they say God sustains us every single day because they've come to a place where they're not surprised that God sustains them because they've had to out of their desperation say, Lord, show me the arrow. We need to move forward in you. We need to listen to your word. Man shall not live by bread alone. We need to listen to what your word says and be obedient to that. And when we do, the sustainment comes. Instead, for whatever reason, like this woman here, who had a son full, uh, with a belly full of food, still died. I mean, when that hit me, I thought, well, that's true. He died, and he was full. He died, and it wasn't what they were thinking. And yet, life still happened. And the man of God brought him back. Fortunately, she went to the man of God. The sermon today is, you can come talk to me, praise the Lord, but you're best solution is to go to the Word of God. Amen. To the Word of God. Whatever that situation is, go to the Word of God. And even when you don't understand it, to go, okay, your Word says this, therefore I'm going to be obedient. Now I know that the Word of God is true. Have we tested? Maybe there's things in your life that you've tested in, your, in the Word. And said, well, you know, um, by Jesus' stripes, I was healed. We can believe that Sandra's finger doesn't have to take six months to heal. We can believe that when your child has a problem in school and doesn't seem to be able to get him through grade four, that we can say, Lord, I thank you that you've given them the mind of Christ. Test these things and move them forward. Get that arrow moving mm -hmm. and say, Lord, you are our sustenance. You are our bread. You are our oil. And we're moving into that. That's God's plan for you. But the enemy will always come on. I don't want to spend a lot of time magnifying him, but he will always try and come and pull out from under you the blessing. If God spoke to the widow woman and the man of God came and said, hey, God's speaking to you, take heart in that. Sometimes we get panic going. I remember in Bible school, you used to be panicked. Oh, what if I missed a service? Or what if I missed, a, you know, there was a word of knowledge given. And what if I didn't get there to hear it? I remember one time in Pastor Peterson, and I will close, true story. 2,000 people in an auditorium. I think it was... I thought it was maybe Tim's story preaching, but I'm not sure. And suddenly, it's all quiet because the guy's asking, where is Carl Allen? <laughs> you want to know where I was? I was in the bathroom. Pastor Jamie came and got me. Now, how embarrassing is that with 2,000 people? And you come out and go, okay, everybody's looking at me. Hi, I was just in the restroom. Sorry I left service. That's why I have patent compassion on you guys if you have to leave. I get it, right? But the point is this. God didn't suddenly stop and say, too bad, Carl, you made a really bad choice that day and you were in the can, therefore I'm not talking to you. God will bring you your sustainment. 
God will share with you whatever it is that you need, wherever you are, if your heart is open to receive. The woman was still planning on dying, even though God had been talking to her. You may not be in a good place, even though you know God's been talking to you. And God says, I'll send the word. I'll send the man of God. We're going to get you moving forward with that arrow. And God will do that for your life. Just be open to him. Amen. Amen. I just wanted to confirm your word, Carl, because God just supernaturally removed fear when I was in India. Amen. And I did not have fear, and I normally would have had loss. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's so true. Get in that God-given place. But it, it takes that step of obedience, eh? To move into that. Your, your mind will still, and that's the one thing I'm learning, is that your mind doesn't necessarily shut off, but your heart can move you forward. Right? Think about that with your spouse. Think about that. It's Valentine's Day. Right? You may have frustrations in your head, but your heart still loves. The God kind of faith is something on the inside that says, I'm moving forward. God's moving you forward. Amen. That's just a little setback, Marilyn. Yeah. Smoke screen. The enemy trying to just get the distraction off that. And let's just begin to believe God. Amen. Amen. Let me just pray for everyone today. Father, as we, as we just take this opportunity right now to live in the sustainment that you have for us. The Lord, we do take authority over any spirit of fear that would say, I, I can't do this. I'm stepping out and I don't know. Lord, we're just thankful that the word says that you will sustain us, that you have commanded that situation, that you, Lord, are moving us forward. And Father, as we step out and walk into the Word of God, walk with the Word of God, that even, Lord, if we think, okay, I don't know if I can do it, we thank you, Lord, that when we're weak, you are strong. Yes. And simply, Lord, I thank you that you're anointing power even right now. As we pray and believe for everyone in this service, that whatever they're going through, Father God, as their meal of oil may be feeling like it's running out, maybe we feel like we're starving to death, maybe we feel like we're full but we're dying, in the name of Jesus, I just call right now the Word of God to set them free in Jesus' name. Not by my, but by your Spirit and by the Word of God in Jesus' name. We thank you for that. If you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, we're praying specifically right now for anyone here in the service and those watching via YouTube, if you'd like to invite Jesus into your heart, yes. we ask you to pray with us today. Yes, Lord, Jesus, Lord, Jesus. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Wash away all of my sin. Wash away all of my sin. I receive you right now. I receive you right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Receive God's goodness today in Jesus' name.